주신 것을 환영합니다. Should I work through some technical difficulties as we get through uh, the first few seconds of the game? And thankfully, like Achilles message mentioned earlier, absolutely nothing is happening. Could uh, throw down some epic commentary of gank by mob standing perfectly still. <laughs> Competitive standing. <laughs> we actually saw that in a couple of our earlier games in the, the tournament. Both mid laners were like walk mid, stand perfectly still, and just minions wait until minions arrive. They're not even uh, not not attacking each other, not not moving. Had a couple of dance offs too, uh, but ultimately it's always one guy that just has to be the scumbag and auto attack <laughs> somebody else. Ruins the fun for everyone. Oh well. Um. So let me know where you are as far as time is concerned, and we'll see if we can sync that up again. Maybe a one forty right now. One forty. Forty-two. Forty-three. Yeah. Well then, it looks like I need to actually catch up with that. So. <laughs> now we flip flopped. Yeah. Now you're the one that's ahead. I'll be casting from the future. Well, luckily, it didn't take me uh, all that much to refresh, and yeah, it does look like I am stuck in the past at uh, about 1 minute and 30 seconds right now. <laughs> the struggles that have come with desyncing everything. Uh, it turns out that connection issues, uh, we are not immune to those. And uh, so let's, I guess, guess we can talk about uh, trying to think of a neutral <laughs> Subject. Uh, the starts for both players actually uh, including a mana potion for ganked by moms. He brings that in on his Caitlyn, whereas two cents just looking for that extra HP. Yeah, very unsurprising. Probably going to be utilizing the tilt over Peacemaker a lot to you know clear out the waves, keep his CS up, and just get that general harass in on two cent, who is otherwise going to be very dependent on consuming the blight stacks to get his harass off. You know, gets. Generate some blight stacks off your auto attacks when you get your blighted quiver on W, which is your passive. And then, of course, you just probably want to proc them ideally with a piercing arrow, but the surefire way of doing so would be with hail of arrows. Very much easier to land. It's got a wider berth to it. Oh, uh, miss on that first piercing arrow does not bode well for two sins, so uh, it's going to have to uh, keep this lane shoving. And he actually does have the wave advantage as far as the control is concerned. Four minions. Still left in there. Gank by Mom will have to take care of those. And Deucin not doing a good job avoiding these Piltover Peacemakers. He's gotten hit by every single one so far. Yes. Just absolutely the only job that you really have against a Caitlyn is to avoid Piltover Peacemakers. Uh, it is the brunt of her harass from range unless she is uh, hitting you with that headshot proc off her passive. Of course, with her weaving in those auto attacks also is great, but... Those peacemakers will tear you apart. You gotta be careful. Uh, Tucson actually out CSing GBM. He actually walked into that Piltover Peacemaker that time. I saw that. I watched him walk straight into it. He's like, I'm gonna micro this way. And well, GBM got the prediction and uh, has the damage advantage. Okay, there's a dodge. Good job, Tucson. Able to finally dodge the, uh, his first Piltover of the game. So. And then he just gets hit by another one. All right. Yep. It, it's a, it's a very quick follow up. <laughs> he does the 90 caliber and heads straight into it and just absolutely rips into him. He's Man, kind of... it's I, I understand that it's a difficult uh, difficult option for an immobile AD carry like Varus, but GBM is just capitalizing on every single one of those. Those Caitlyn tricks. It's it's just a little bit too rough for him to deal with, and he's already gone through all of his health potions. GBM uh, still has... Uh, actually, no, he's gone with he his, his well. thing, too. Yeah. But, uh, you know, 10 CS difference in favor of Tucson still. So you can see he's got double Doran's Blade now coming back in, as or, well as health and mana potions. Or at least he will. Uh, sometime he will. In the future. <laughs> um, Dang. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wave advantage for GBM as he shoves it into the turret. He's going to go back and force Tucson to... Spend some time CSing there at the turret. Uh, yeah, double Doran should be the bias here for on both sides, but actually a 10 CS advantage now for Tucson. GPM has been putting all that pressure on harassing and just dropped down a little bit in CS. Yeah, which is a little bit surprising considering that he's playing Caitlyn. He's playing the champion that has the range. I guess he's just been focusing a bit too much 
on landing those that onslaught of Piltover Peacemakers onto Tucson that he has just forgotten. Oh yeah, I need CS as well. And a nice snipe there by Tucson does land that piercing arrow, but of course it's not really going to be quite as effective. And oh, there's a nice slow hail of arrows. You know, it's going to cut healing a little bit, and it's easy to land for damage, but primarily, if you hit Gank by Mom with a slow, it's going to force a 90 caliber net to disengage, otherwise he is going to take a lot of extra damage. Yeah, and there's going to be some uh, heavy trading back and forth, so get hype! All right, I'm ready for it. There's that hail of arrows, and we talked about needing the 90 caliber net to escape it. Tucson walking forward is going to look for the piercing to pop those stacks here in just a second. Once again, walking right into the built over Peacemaker. Unfortunately, having some difficulties dodging those this series. Ganked by Mom. We'll see if that is what turns it in his favor. Because as far as CS is concerned, he is continuing to drop uh, drop behind in it. He has brought himself back about 3-4 uh, CS. There's that free ace in the hole. It's going to hit. Nobody to block that. We need shoes, Teemo. To run up the mid lane <laughs> and then just take the the, the uh, ace in the hole right there. Yeah, it might one shot him. <laughs> I was gonna say, well, that's actually true. He gets like level eight, level nine, the one shot with the ace in the hole. It's possible, but uh, for Shu, uh, observers unfortunately resigned to their spots on the fountain. We actually had some issues with observers actually walking out of the fountain earlier, so. They are they are locked in fountain prison right now. Or at yeah, least they can... should be. She was actually walked out of his prison. He's still inside the base though. <laughs> as long as he has no real impact, that's where uh, it doesn't matter. That's where it becomes a problem when you when you have that going on. Well, any game that has a Teemo in it already has a problem. But <laughs> we'll uh, we'll oh, let it slide this time. The Teemo BM, ever present. I mean, it's global taunt is always engaged. When they say global taunt for Teemo, it's not just global as in the map, it's global as in the world. It's taunting everyone all time. Once again, back on the fountain. And as far as trades go, let's talk about that in the mid lane. Uh, it used to be a 10 CS advantage, now it's only about 5 or 6. Tucson with the sustain advantage, but uh, there's another ace in the hole. I wonder if you could ever just win a game by just... Ace in the hole in your target over and over again. It's gonna be a I little suppose bit of an advantage. If, if they never backed. <laughs> and you're and, standing in lane over and over. And never auto attacked with their Doran's blades. Then yes. It is possible. Otherwise, uh, I mean, Houston's in a good spot. <laughs> yeah, he's in a good spot as far as pushing is concerned. His higher CS count means that when he does get to 100, he can put a lot more pressure on uh, to yank by Mom, who is playing a remarkably passive Kaelin style. Uh, won't miss any of these CS uh, under turret, but we'll, oh, there's a piercing arrow to land. Down to under 400 HP, and Tucson just uh, kind of living the high life here. Up a Doran's Blade in that matchup, and... Uh, GBM still needs to wait for his teleport to come off cooldown. Whoa! Flashes! That Varus ultimate probably wouldn't have hit it anyway, but better safe than sorry, I guess. It, he was very much on the verge. It, I think it was a matter of pixels at that point as to whether or not that one was going to land. Right. And you know, a little if he hard had to gotten tell. hit, then he would have died instantly, so... Probably yeah. a good uh, good thing to use your flash for, but those hails of arrows, still difficult to deal with. Teleports back up, so we will get a chance to go back to base. Yeah. Any predictions on the item buy? <laughs> All Doran's blades. I actually picked up five mana potions. That is, uh, that's kind of remarkable. Uh, oh, actually trying to stop the recall there and does so successfully. So also <laughs> dropping that scrying orb just to make sure he knows exactly where Tucson is at all times. Yeah, he wants to keep tabs on him, which is good. That's what you want. Okay, of course, the Scrying Orb, the staple free item for her, very much helps you. Not even just in a 1v1, but also in a regular 5v5, spot out a target if you lose vision on of them. Get that ace in the hole rolling. Oh, nice barrier actually used there by Tucson. Blocks the entirety of that ace in the hole damage. Not sure it's necessarily worth a summoner spell, because keep in mind, Tucson does not have flash, uh, so he's extra immobile. Won't be able to get out of any of these. Uh, if he steps into Caitlyn Trap, he's kind of done. No way to get out of that. But uh, now with all those mana potions, you're going to see GBM pretty much permanently regenerating mana. Yeah. 
Yep, just a lot of harass back and forth between the, the two, but... Discrepancy, of course, is two Doran's Blades. Tucson just miles ahead in this matchup. He's also that 10 CS advantage. It's there, and he'll be able to use it to win the game if he gets up to 100 CS. Which he does need to have 10 over ganked by Mom. But he's almost there. If he gets every minion in this wave, I think he might actually just win. And so GBM's walking forward. Deucin does have his ultimate up again. <laughs> He's waiting there. He's going to hit GBM. Of course, he has already won the game. The 101 CS to 91 CS final score. Yep, so overall, I mean, despite the immense amount of harass that we saw their first clash in the mid lane there, um, this, you know, game ends to CS advantage, which is definitely, I would say, the um, minority of wins that we see in this tournament. Most of the time it is that first blood and sometimes even the tower push. Um, but taking it away with the CS. So actually coming up pretty strongly on that Varus compared to the Caitlyn, which is a bit surprising. We'll have to see if that's going to make it through the pick and bands of the next game. Which we'll be into momentarily. All right, now I'm trying to uh, try to get everything synced up here and see if we can uh, even things up, maybe just a little bit more. Um, there was a, a small issue, so I think I'm actually going to take a small break to do that while we run a quick commercial in between these two games. So I'll be right back in before game number two, which is actually up on my screen. So I think I actually might have fixed the issue. In one second, we should have this back and ready to go. All right, so we're back into champion selection. Uh, looks like we can go ahead and, uh, and sync things up here. So we're, we're going bans. There's 17 seconds left for Tucson to ban his third champion. What is it going to be? As I still reside slightly in the future, I can tell you it is a Cassiopeia ban. Oh my goodness. This is why we keep Achilles around. Man, you're so good at this. It's like, uh, it's like you know ahead of time. Helios for Profit 2015. Get out of here, crumbs. <laughs> I'm taking your spot. We're going to have the, the Achilles copy pasta with the photoshopped beard and robe. That was uh, probably my favorite thing that Riot has ever done, I will say. <laughs> Include crumbs the Profit. Well, uh, <laughs> definitely. Uh, so, so what's the last band going to be? Okay, well, it's a new new. I already saw new it. New new. Yeah. So that's one that we've seen taken away fairly consistently, I would say. Uh, and I mean, it's it makes sense. He gets free casts off of his auto attacks. He has an immense amount of sustain with his consume, and uh, just can deal generally a lot of damage. Surprising amount of damage for somebody who is otherwise uh, considered a tank. So not too surprising that we see that one coming out. Yeah, and uh, Tucson has uh, picked up a win earlier. I think his first win of the Solo King was on Nunu. Uh, mm. So kind of going back to his roots there in, uh, in some regard. Yeah, as we can see, the Caitlyn was taken away this time by GBM banning that one out. Didn't want to play against it. I believe that is one of uh, one of two Caitlyn losses this tournament, so... Definitely the minority. And, uh, makes it all the more shocking that it happened. As you can see, Tucson is on the graves this time. Ooh, and yeah, a lot of bands are going to be. I go. Wait, what? Was that a change <laughs> to a Yasuo? Good job not giving that away. Was, uh... <laughs> Containing myself here, <laughs> keeping the excitement in as much as possible. I uh, I don't know. I'm not used to seeing Yasuos. Uh, we there's actually a one v one tournament to that uh, I think Nice Game TV broadcast with uh, oh it was all Yasuo players so. It was just what Yasuo 1v1s all the way. It was best Yasuo Korea. And I believe a guy named Top Mimic actually wound up winning. No uh, no OGN pros involved in that one though. So we'll get a chance to see if Ganked by Mom's Yasuo is good enough to take on Tucson's Graves. Uh, initially, I would say this seems like a horrible matchup, but there's always that option that Yasuo has if he lands a knockup to just straight up kill the AD carry. Graves is pretty tanky though. 
Yeah, I was going to say, it's going to be all the more difficult given Graves' is passive where he gets that increased armor and magic resist. Of course, magic resist is not going to help him whatsoever in that matchup against the Yasuo, but the armor, all the same, will. Uh, so that will make him a force to be reckoned with. I think this is really going to come down to wind wall pr uh, placement for GPM. As long as he can block the buck shots and maybe even the collateral damage post six, then that should be able to swing it back into his favor. All right, so taking a look at the uh, the runes and masteries here, we actually have uh, percent cooldown reduction for GBM, just so he can spam as much as possible. But yeah, cooldown reduction blues. I would have expected to see mana regen in there, but I guess he's just gonna buy a lot of uh, a lot of mana potions there. A little bit of extra AD, nine points in armor. This is uh, this is kind of weird. There's no attack speed increase, so that's that's probably the most significant absence from his rune page. But uh. I don't know what this mastery page is. He's got a point in... How did he make this mastery page? He has a point in Dangerous Game, which doesn't do anything, because, you know, if you win the game by killing the other guys, you don't need that extra health back. He's got a point in Critical Strike. Uh, every time you get a crit, you get extra attack speed, but he's not going to be buying any Critical Strike damage. He also has a point in Amplifying Damage for Allied Champions. There aren't any of those in there either, so three mastery points are kind of in an interesting place. I wish I had an answer for you. Unfortunately, the uh, future does not hold one for, this, for that mastery page. Uh, really interesting, almost oversighted picks. You know, just didn't really think about it too much, I suppose. He just kind of, I'm going to put points here and here and here. <laughs> <laughs> He's also split his uh, armor and HP runes, uh, favoring 11 AD. Has gone with uh, two attack damage quintessences and one attack speed quintessence. And then has split his reds between armor and attack speed. That was uh, definitely one of the weirdest combinations I've seen in a long time as far as runes go. But for masteries, uh, no point in Dangerous Game and none of the points in any of the uh, masteries that we saw for GBM. So Tuzin's mastery page looks a lot better. Still nine points in defense, but everything uh, a little bit closer to where they should be. A bit more in line there. We'll have to see if these oddball sh decisions are going to net either a win see who's going to come out on top maybe we will have a three game matchup between these two or maybe Tucson's just going to go ahead win 2-0 and advance on to his next opponent we'll have to see what happens when we get into the rift which will happen momentarily all right, so let's take a quick uh, quick overview of exactly what we can expect. We've got ganked by Mom. He'll be taking on Tucson now. And then our last matchup before we get into uh, the final deciding elimination matches is going to be OQ versus Ambition. So you definitely don't want to watch that one. Make sure to stick around. Hit that follow button. Support our charity right down below the stream ever. And we will be back in just a second. And we're back. So welcome back to the Solo King tournament, ladies and gentlemen, for our second game of uh, this best of three. <laughs> Chad's going with the flash jump at level one, as always. Uh, we got Tucson versus GBM. My name is Rapid. That, uh, that voice from the future that you're going to be hearing this game is Achilles. So I'll be, uh, I'll be asking for predictions over the course of this game, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you get them right. Yeah, if I don't get them right, then that <laughs> says something horrible about me. <laughs> like, you can actually see them, and then you still don't know what's up. So, uh, <laughs> so prediction time. Who gets first blood, Achilles? Oh, it's, uh, it's going to be too soon. Really? So you're predicting a 2-0 against the guy that 2 owed Faker? Yes. I think that it'll be the upset... It'll be the don't, it'll be the bigger upset of the tournament outside of Faker getting defeated initially. I think wow. that wow. 
I think the GBM losing 2-0 to Tucson be that much more of an upset, so that's what I'm going to bank on happening. Of course, I don't have too much insight in that regard as of yet. Haven't quite reached that point in my uh, mystic visions. Okay, so a couple of things to talk about here. GBM has Ignitus' as summoner spell along with, of course, that prerequisite teleport. Could have brought Flash, but much, much smarter to bring Teleport uh, so that Tucson can't play overly passively. Now, another thing we saw from GBM's runes was that he brought a lot of cooldown reduction in with him. Uh, still kind of confused as to why exactly why he was going for that. Uh, also, that's the reason he didn't bring Mana Regen. I don't know why I said that when I was talking about his runes earlier, but... Um, with uh, going with the sustain build there, Tucson does make himself very, very vulnerable to dying at like level two, level three once uh, once Yasuo hits those power spikes. So, unless Prophet Achilles is that far ahead in the future, <laughs> should still be a mystery. It is. I can confirm that it is indeed a mystery. But like you said, GB, I'm not going with the flash, which I think is a good idea. Uh, if you hit that level six point, you're going to get the last breath, which kind of acts as a flash for you as long as you land the knockup. But one of the things that you don't want to do is flash into the face of the graves. Because obviously the more shells that you eat from that buckshot, the more damage it's going to deal. And if you eat all three, if you're right up in his face, it is going to absolutely decimate you. So not too surprising that he doesn't want to take that one. Uh, the flash would really be used, I feel, to dodge out the Ooh. skill shots of Tucson. Wow, yeah, Tucson uh, is going to be really happy he has that flash summoner spell. GBM is putting on the pressure. Needs to hit that level three so that Tucson doesn't just... Smoke bomb and then walk up with the oh does man really good at landing these knockups so far too. I think GBM's like three for three on them. And I mean keep in mind Yasuo is the uh, the champion that used to be I I don't want to say the most popular. I think Oriana was still the most popular, but one of the most popular champions in champions uh, oh. last season. So he's hit a few nerfs since then, so we don't see too many Yasuos these days. Yeah, I don't really see him too much in general. Uh, even on the NA side of things, he's not really been in favor. You will see, uh, coming up here, GBM utilizing the Wind Wall to deny Tucson from getting that Under Tower Harass. So, pretty well played in that regard. But, they're actually staying fairly even, despite being a melee champion compared to a ranged champion. Uh, you know, GBM's doing a decent job of CSing. Whoa, uh, not doing it such a great job at keeping his HP high. Uh, might have actually been in kill potential right there before disengaging. Uh, I think he's going to have that buckshot stop him from going back. Does have a full uh, way, way of the Wanderer passive. So he'll have a little bit of extra shields. But yeah, Tucson's just going to walk up and stop him over and over again. Tucson might be risking death here. The wind wall used early is going to make this rough to CS at turret for GBM. Oh, turret shot there actually might make a difference. Yeah, it certainly does help him out. But yeah, not able to get those backs in Tucson, just laying down that onslaught of just walking up trying to throw the buckshot down and keep him from that recall. So wind wall is... Uh... Pokey, yeah. I feel like the only way that GBM is going to recall is if he puts up a wind wall first so that Tucson can't stop it from backing. Yeah, he's actually going to be recalling fairly soon. It's going to peel back quite a bit of dif uh, distance so far that Tucson can't just dive in on him. I love how you're saying fairly soon when it's actually already happened. Oh, oh wow, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> well, what do you know? Oh, well, okay. what do you know? I, I'm at 5.36 right now, so okay. hopefully there's not too big a discrepancy. I will keep that in mind when I lay my predictions on you. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. Okay, so uh, coming back in the lane, triple Dorans versus double Dorans. That means that when GBM hits level 6, there is so much kill potential. Coming in there, if he is able to land one of those Steel Tempests, uh, continue to go in there, getting those aggressive trades down. Where's the knockup? Oh, didn't go for it. Wezzle still only level 5, so needs that level 6 to hit in there. There it is. Well, get ready for some action, I will oh, say. Oh, avoids completely that ultimate. There's Ignite going down. He needs one more auto attack to pick it up. It's ganked by Mom. 
with the first blood so close in there that ignite really the uh, the turning point and also being able to dash right to the side and completely avoid collateral damage beautiful micro there by gank by mom just just barely avoiding that of course he missed his last steel tempest but he had the auto attack that won him the game winning the 1v1 versus two since graves it's gbm and he'll tie the series up at one to one yeah so i suppose that seeing the future doesn't uh, help out all the time i was wrong gbm does pick up a win and now we go to the third round match which is going to be blind pick between oh, these two players, which is even more hype than that last well, little scrimmage. you say scrimmage. it's even more hype, unless we get, like, Caitlyn versus Caitlyn. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> yesterday we had Karthus versus Caitlyn. Uh, that did not go well for Faker's Karthus. Let's see the double Urgot. Oh my gosh. We have they had, could... uh, We okay. have had least in 1v1s before. Yeah, those are always, uh, very fun to watch, just off of mechanics alone. Of course, uh, we could see something as hype as that Mad Life 1v1 that against his own terrible. teammate. Double Mundo. Yeah, Mad the, the dodgeball games. That was uh, probably my favorite moment from this entire tournament thus far. <laughs> the Faker versus Mad Life. Or not Faker, but uh, Mad Life versus Space dodgeball game. If you guys haven't seen Mad Life versus Space, make sure to head back to the VOD section and, uh, and definitely check it out. I believe it's also on Azubu's YouTube channel. Azubu YouTube. That's also kind of uh, kind of rough to say, but uh, do want to also mention if you are just now joining us or are new to the Solo King, but want more action coming your way, make sure to hit that follow button right down below the screen. And if you'd like to help us support Extra Life charities, they help support children's hospitals around the nation. Uh, just scroll down, click on that Extra Life link, and that'll help you know exactly how you can donate to support the cause. Of course, if you're here to support the cause of esports and Korean 1v1s, then you don't have much farther to go. We'll be getting into our third and final blind pick game of this best of three. GBM losing game one, but bringing it back in game number two. See what champions are selected here in game number three. And uh, also, no pick order either. You don't get to know mm -hmm. what you're playing against until you actually get into the game. Yep, you just have to... Played the discovery game when you get onto that loading screen, and uh, it can either be a fantastic moment as you go, Yes, I picked the counter, or you go, Oh, damn, I'm gonna get destroyed by this, <laughs> by this champion. So it can go either way. I'm interested to see what these guys are gonna pull out. Uh, we did see Nunu taken away earlier, and now that is going to be on the board, so I'm interested to see if we will see that picked up. That's my speculation, that's not me <laughs> playing from the future. We'll see what happens here. Okay, well, uh, it does look like we have finished uh, the champion selection. It is like, going to be a Varus versus Caitlyn. Tucson picking up that Caitlyn once again, but uh, is that going to be the answer? Uh, it's kind of interesting to see them, you know, swapping things up a little bit, going for the, uh, the Varus versus Caitlyn rematch we got to see earlier. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see if GBM is able to, you know, play forward with this Varus this time. C2 Sin did a really good job on it, utilizing the Blight Stacks and just laying on a lot of harass with the Hail of Arrows. Caitlyn had a much rougher time, but then again, Caitlyn still does have that win ratio in her advantage. So... Ganked by Mom this time, going for 14% attack speed, 15 AD, and uh, I believe that is 8.5 armor penetration? Um, uh, I'm not sure exactly what his runes wound up being there towards the end, but as far as masteries go, uh, GBM still has that pesky point in Dangerous Game. Doesn't actually do anything, but as far as everywhere else is concerned, looks good. One point in Warlord. So he does have 2% uh, additional damage, but yeah, the the observer is highlighting it right now. The point in dangerous mm -hmm. game doesn't really uh, doesn't really matter all that much. I, I'm really interested, I, and I would love to be able to sit down with the majority, <laughs> maybe not the majority, but a good number of the players in the Solo King tournament and ask why are you why do you continually take this 
in your mastery page. Well, I mean, it's kind of reflexive to see, uh, to, to see, hey, I get that little bit of extra HP, can win me the 1v1 matchup, but not necessarily something that you're, uh, you're too used to going without, so... That's going to do it for our uh, picks, and uh, I guess there were no bans, because it was blind pick. <laughs> Runes and Masteries, they're all underway, so we're going to get underway with our last game of the night. It's, uh, it's going to be uh, one of the most hyped matchups I've seen. Ganked by Mom, a guy that some people, I was talking to a, a, an analyst friend of mine, he said, yeah, there's no way Ganked by Mom loses this tournament. And that was before he played against Faker. So, very bold statement to make, and it's proven true until now. We'll have to see how Ganked by Mom does versus Tucson. We'll have our final game of this best of three series coming up in just a second. Once again, make sure to hit the follow button right down below the screen. Donate to our Extra Life charity if you can by scrolling down right below there as well. And uh, stick around because this is not our last best of three of the night. Coming up uh, for our final game, it's going to be Ambition versus OQ. So you don't want to miss that. And of course, the elimination matches to follow. Once again, this is the Solo King being broadcast on Azubu TV. Thank you for watching. We'll be right back. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solo King here on Azubu TV. My name is Rapid, and no longer from the future, my co-caster Achilles joining me for what is hopefully a much more in sync performance, yeah. as opposed okay. to all the other in sync performances out there, which I was not fortunate enough to get tickets to. <laughs> oh man, I have unfortunately, as you said, lost my prophetic powers. So I will be on the same page as the rest of you mortals here as <laughs> okay, we so get just, onto the rift. All right, so I'll try to define to uh, to call out the defining moments here. Just some some quick banter before the game starts. Uh, Tucson had some words of wisdom for GBM. Don't know exactly what they were, but uh, maybe we'll get some secret behind the scenes translation on those. Uh, from Ched Nader later on. Ched uh, not opting for his uh, his trademark flash rocket jump that he does every single other game. Yeah, maybe he's busy translating. Maybe they were saying, let's just sit in fountain. <laughs> sit in fountain, get that passive gold generation. Because <laughs> once again, we're seeing that uh, competitive standing going on right now. I think what they want to do is have themselves be the observers and have the spectators <laughs> go play the 1v1 for them. Let's see the Teemo versus Tristana matchup <laughs> in, in the mid lane. <laughs> but keep in mind, it's also um, Clarity Cleanse Teemo versus Flash Ignite Tristana. Uh, something tells me that Clarity Cleanse may not be quite as impactful. I suppose you could take off the bomb. Can you do that? I guess... I it would it only... be... It only cleanses debuffs, though. That's true. I guess it does it. I'm unfamiliar if, if it gives you a debuff with the Nutrisonic, because you never see cleanse really taken. You, so you... <laughs> I'm, I'm really unfamiliar with how those two interact with each other. Yeah, I think you'd need a QSS for that. But okay. I wonder if it drops the bomb on the ground like it drops Fizz's fish on the ground. That would be really interesting programming from uh, the game devs if that's how it behaves. I'd like to see that in action, but for now, as we can see, they are in the lane and the CSing war has begun. We'll have to see if that's how this one's going to end yet again, Boy. or if it's going to be a bit more aggressive. GBM dodging that pilt over Peacemaker, and he's actually playing this lane both aggressively and getting ahead in the CS. Of course, that is only momentary because Tucson actually has more CS to kill on the field, so should be able to even that up. And uh, actually, I believe he's actually couple CS ahead. Three CS ahead if he gets every single one of these, which he will not. Nope. Uh, Tower going to go ahead and claim one of those. But Tucson getting harassed out a bit. I mean, they're both chugging their Crystalline Flask charges, which we will go ahead and touch on that. Both of them opting to go for that. Do, do not want to go hyper aggressive with the Doran's Blade. They saw how this matchup ended last time. So unsurprising in that regard. But Tucson still guarding himself a decent CS lead for 
the point that we are at in this matchup. I hit by about four. Now, uh, one other difference that uh, we should point out is the uh, summoner spells. It's a barrier for ganked by mom. And I think mm. the barrier is primarily just for uh, ace in the hole. So that mm -hmm. if you're going to die and you disengage, you can still stop the ace in the hole with the barrier. Because you know you're going to get full value out of it. Yeah, I think these are the, are these the, I believe the exact same summoner spells that we saw just inverted on the players. Mm -hmm. So each, yeah. you know, each champion's still using the same ones because we did see Tucson have barrier and he ate that questionable ace in the hole. You know, actually over the course of the, uh, the tournament, it's actually been GBM preferring only this barrier teleport uh, mastery setup. He did go with ignite in the last game on Yasuo, but I feel mm. like that's because he knew that he needed to be getting first blood to win the game because he wasn't really going to ever out farm graves. So, wow, GBM playing this game so far forward, Tucson. Yeah. Get those stacks popped already. Yeah, really good zoning pushes him into that little, you know, alleyway on the side and then forces him into the piercing arrow, consuming those defile stacks. So really good harass, but he walks straight into a built over Peacemaker as well. He's done that so many times this tournament. Yeah, this just seems to be the theme of this matchup is walk into him. That is not a win condition. Walking into the built over Peacemakers does not help you win. Yeah, GBM eats a headshot, so that's probably not super high on his list of things to do. Does dodge that Piltover Peacemaker, so we can't give him too much flack for getting hit by those. You know, kind of hit like a stagnant point here in the CS. Tucson just floating ever above GBM in this regard, but not really stretching the lead too much, but a lot of harass coming out. Actually, Barrier popped. He was afraid of the headshot. Oh, and a miss on that Piercing Arrow. If he had hit the Piercing Arrow, it might have been an okay trade, but now GBM is actually in a really rough spot. He's almost out of mana completely, whereas yeah. Tucson, starting with that extra mana potion, is actually going to be a little bit ahead. Yeah, he's also got that headshot. I'm going to actually go ahead and pop it out. This is going to be his last Piercing Arrow that he's able to cast before he's completely able. There it is, so. Hits the wave. Tucson fires back with the built over Peacemaker. He's gonna be able to clear out these minions, no problem. And that's GBM looking to have the first back of this game. He's currently going to want to teleport back because Tucson is going to get one heck of a CS advantage right now. Already 12 ahead. And just under halfway to that 100 CS mark. Yeah, Tucson will be denying uh, a couple of CS. Actually, no, does not deny yep. any CS under turrets. So it is uh, significantly farther ahead in the creep score department. But the way that Gank by Mom has been playing this lane has just been so aggressive that uh, he's actually missed out on not only a lot of CS. You can see that actually impacting the items being bought now behind an entire Doran's Blade versus Tucson. Yeah, that's just going to be very rough for GBM now in this matchup. Oh, the Hail of Arrows, trying to get a bit more harass, which we did see that, you know, the Hail of Arrows harass was doing quite well. Actually, ultimate comes across, but Tucson underneath the tower will get hit by that piercing arrow. But he's got a lot of sustain coming in, Triple Doran's Blade, plus the Crystalline Flask. He will be able to heal himself up rather quickly, and that ultimate down from GBM is going to alleviate a lot of pressure for Tucson. And GBM can keep putting out these, like, cheap little, you know, spells, mm -hmm. like, uncharged piercing arrows, just throwing out hail of arrows every once in a while. But he's not really getting enough value out of those to avoid Tucson just out-sustaining him. He can see us at long range with Pilter for Peacemakers, but Tucson is just straight up has more CS, and unless all of this aggression from GBM denies Tucson that much, it's just not going to work out see there uh, did not have barrier to block that ace in the hole from having kind of whiffed it earlier yeah so now kind of turning that one on its head for Tucson so good ace in the hole back will help him swing his HP in favor picks up the cannon minion just in time misses that one however but still 10 CS lead off the top of GBM so still looking pretty good Nice Peacemaker comes through, but now they're trading a bit more evenly, despite the Doran's blade advantage by two cents. Well, GBM yeah. ran out of consumables, so yeah. now he can't keep sustaining like he had been earlier. These are his last charges of his Crystalline Flask. This is all he gets. 
Yeah, this is also going to hurt uh, his mana yet again, which is why he had the back in the first place. As we can see, he's got a, enough for, I believe, one piercing arrow, maybe a hail of arrows as well. I'm not too... Yeah, it looks like... A, I believe he can get both of those out, but even so, uh, not nearly enough harass onto Tucson if he lands both of those spells to really do that much damage. It's keep another keep walking into these Piltovers. That is... Yeah. I don't know. The mystery of the century is how does GBM get hit by so many Piltovers? Plus, he's tanking up that entire creep wave, too, or at least the last three minions, so yeah. not trades he's looking to make. He's got to be really careful because the Ace in the Hole just came off cooldown here for Tucson. So, you know, if he gets a headshot off with a couple auto attacks, maybe another Piltover Peacemaker in there as well. With the Ace in the Hole, he'll be able to find the kill. Actually, oh. the barrier is up. Flashes. Not just the shackles here. The barrier comes out. He fires back, gets a good amount of damage on the Tucson, but he's completely low and low himself. There's the ace in the hole. Eats it. Still going to live, but he's uh, very much playing on dangerous grounds right now yeah, with his HP. Barriers have been really questionable. GBM mm. not really getting a lot of value out of either one of them. Uh, might as well have gone with like a summoner to heal because at least he'd be guaranteed to get that HP back, but. The barrier, it's a little bit stronger than some of the heal as far as, you know, the amount of damage it blocks, but uh, unfortunately he has not had the greatest experiences with those. Uh, went back just a couple of seconds before his teleport was up, so uh, I'm not sure exactly why he's going with that. Actually sold a Doran's Blade. No, no, he didn't sell a Doran's Blade. He just picked no. up a Pickaxe Longsword and four mana potions, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe that's just one mana potion. I can't exactly I think, see I believe it's on. just one mana potion there i don't think he had the gold to pick up uh the pickaxe longsword and multiples I believe it left him probably with about 50 gold after that purchase so he's only able to get the one mana pot now that i believe gank by mom is actually up one minion uh is, is one minion ahead of the uh the cutoff point so i think he's only like nine minions behind and with this pickaxe longsword his abilities are gonna hurt tucson bought a giant spell Oh my god, he just says, look, I am not going to die here, because he knows if he just stays alive in lane, he's going to win this game. Yeah, he's 98 to 90 CS right now, so just, oh, it's just a matter of time. CS. Oh my gosh, is he going to get it? No, the GBM piercing cleared arrow. out the minion wave, and now all he has to do is keep his CS up, and okay, now he's only five, uh, what, two CS now? It's, it's hard to calculate it. Uh, and then the, if Tucson gets the three here, which it looks like he will. Okay, he is nine. Yeah. Uh, he, he needs three CS years. to win. Tucson needs three CS before GVM gets any. He's Whoa. gonna have to be careful that a file does have a ton of damage, though. Yeah, that a file de dealing that percentage damage is going to hurt. Now he's down by three. This is uh, this is actually becoming a bit of a heated matchup now. Between these two, this is that one. This is actually really interesting. Tucson's giant spelt by might have been pretty cool, but when it comes down to it, it is crippling him. And he's still getting hit by those piercing arrows. GBM does have a lot of uh, a lot of pressure on him to keep his CS up, but he's now actually able to zone Tucson off the CS a little bit, which might just help him continue to stay just barely in this CS game, but man, it's so close. Like, down to the wire, and okay, he has to kill him. Underneath, I, 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 I don't know. That This is getting really dangerous, because GBM can either just kill Tucson, kill the turret, or just keep killing CS and keep Tucson from ever getting that uh, 10 CS advantage. Whoa, and this is actually gonna be a kill be for Ganked by Mom! Wow. More aggression, that giant spell gave Tucson a little bit of an advantage when he came back, but he could never get that 10 CS advantage. Yeah, it actually harms him because, as we can see here, just really nice piercing arrow into the ultimate, lays down the hail, and just is able to find the kill. Wow. But the giant spell pickup actually harmed Tucson because with the hyper-aggressive buys by GBM with the pickaxe and with the additional longsword. He was able to clear the waves faster and force Tucson underneath of his tower and he was missing CS under tower. He missed probably in those last minutes a, a solid 5 or 6 CS I would say um, to the turret which could have potentially cost him 
that victory right there. Uh, but well played GBM will keep moving forward. The man that conquers Faker conquers Tucson as well, so he will advance. Yeah, that was an incredibly close 1v1. And we will be getting an interview with Gank by Mom here in just a second, so you don't want to miss that. Uh, it will be in Korean. I'll see if we can get some translation for that. But uh, otherwise, one of the closest games that we've seen all day long. And uh, actually, it really makes me love this 10 CS advantage rule. Previously, it was if you get to 100 CS, you just win. But if you have this 10 CS advantage, then there's that little bit of leeway. Gank by Mom was just seconds away from losing, fractions of a second away from losing, but he was able to spam down on the wave and put so much pressure on Tusa that it was just a little bit too much to deal with. So, man, Achilles, I don't know what to say. If every game's like that, I'm not going to make it, but hopefully we can <laughs> see some more intense matchups. Well, then we will uh, you know, we'll have to sacrifice you for those good matchups because uh, <laughs> that's, I like to keep the hype up, so if we're going to see... The rest of the games like that today, then I am all for it. All right, well, we will be getting that interview with Gank by Mom coming up here in just a second. Uh, hopefully, uh, here in a second. But that does give me an opportunity to uh, let you guys know uh, about the uh, the charity that the Solo King is uh, is supporting. You can see it right down below your screen. It is Extra Life. Helps support children's hospitals across the nation. And if you guys want to help donate to that, Scroll right down below the screen, hit that donate button, and uh, it'll go to a good cause. Of course, also, if you want to keep up with the Solo King, make sure to uh, follow us on our Azubu TV stream. You can see the follow button right down below the stream there. If you just want to click that, and it'll let you know whenever we go live with more Solo King action. So definitely something to, uh, something to do, because we do have the grand finals and semifinals coming up not too far after this. Uh, it'll be on the 8th of, uh, 8th of March. Yeah, so be. that's, uh, what is that, five days from now? Yeah, that would be correct. Three plus five is eight. Whoa! It's crazy math. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, I will not be present for those final games. I will be watching with bated breath on my phone from the Sanctity of My Hotel at PAX East in Boston. Oh, man. All right, well... Some of us will be doing cool <laughs> stuff, but here's the interview with Gank by Mom. Enjoy it. We'll be right back. Thank <laughs> 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 <la�> <laughs> 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 <la�> <laughs> 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 <la�> <laughs> 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 <la�> <laughs> 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 <la�> <laughs> 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 <la�> <laughs> 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 <la�> <laughs> 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 <laugh
그래서 많이들 좋아해 주시니까 저도 더 좋아할 수밖에 없었던 것 같아요. 음. 네. 그래서 계속, 계속 갔던 것 같아요. 네, 아 정말 긍정의 힘을 그렇죠. 다시 한번 느낄 수 있었던 것 같아요. 예, 채팅방에 들어가게 되면 아무래도 관심을 받을 수 있으니까 <웃음> 지속적으로 들어갔다라는 그렇죠. 거고 네. 그리고 네. 이제 그 전에 아, 저번 주 토요일이었나 용산에서 봤을 때 저저 네. 저저번 주였나 아무튼 용산에서 네. 봤을 때뭐 그런 얘기를 했었잖아요. 아 누구 어떤 미드라이너가 CS를 굉장히 잘 먹는다라고 했을 때 네. 이현우 해설이었나요? 네가 CS를 못 먹는 거잖아라고 그렇게 막 <웃음> 네. 대받아 치시더라고요. 네, 네. 오늘 경기를 제가 현장에서 직접 해설을 해 보니까 CS를 잘못 먹는 것 같은데 어떻게 생각하세요? 네. 또 그게 그걸 예전부터 알고 있기 때문에 CS를 <웃음> 더잘 먹도록 노력해야겠어요 앞으로 너무 지금 이제 위기가 <웃음> 아, 아, 열심히 노력하겠다 어, 네. 뭔가 강한 한 방에 대답을 좀 기대를 했는데 이걸 또 이렇게 순순히 받아들이시니까 기분이 좀 묘하네요 자 어쨌든 자, 뭐, 어쨌든 뭐, 강 선수들을 네. 조금 많이 꺾고 그리고 이제 4강에 진출을 하시게 되었는데 많은 팬 여러분들께서 갱맘 선수 응원하고 있습니다 네 감사의 네. 한 말씀 마지막으로 부탁드리겠습니다 네, 오늘 좀 쫄깃한 경기를 보여드려서 나름 뿌듯하고요. 네. 앞으로 채팅방 갱킹도 좀 가면서 같이 즐겁게 놀수 있도록 하겠습니다. 네. 오늘 <웃음> 즐거움 주신 갱만 선수 고맙습니다. 네. 감사합니다. 네. 감사합니다. 아 인터뷰에서도 굉장히 유쾌함이 느껴지는 선수예요. 어. And that's going to do it for our interview with Gank by Moms. Do you want to thank him for his interview? And thank you guys for tuning in to the Solo King. That will be our uh, next to last of our initial best of threes. Last best of three of at least this uh, mini group stage will feature Ambition versus OQ. We'll get that game coming your way here in just a second. So make sure to stick around. When we come back, it'll be that best of three and, of course, three more. We decide the final four players. We'll advance to the Grand Finals uh, a little bit later on this week. Uh, say I believe it is, in fact, next week. Five days from now, we have those finals coming your way, so you don't want to miss it. So stick around. We'll be right back with Ambition versus OQ and a whole lot more here on The Solo King.